can we try to define AGI that we've been mentioning? How do you like to think about what artificial general intelligence is or super intelligence or that? Is there a line? Is it a gray area? Is there a good definition for you? Well, if you look at humans, humans have significantly more generally applicable intelligence compared to their closest relatives, the chimpanzees, well, closest living relatives, rather. And a bee builds hives, a beaver builds dams. A human will look at a bee's hive and a beaver's dam and be like, oh, like, can I build a hive with a a honeycomb structure? Mm -hmm. Not like hexagonal tiles. And we will do this even though at no point during our ancestry was any human optimized to build hexagonal dams or to take a more clear-cut case. We can go to the moon. There's a sense in which we were on a sufficiently deep level optimized to do things like going to the moon because if you generalize sufficiently far and sufficiently deeply, chipping flint hand axes and outwitting your fellow humans is, you know, basically the same problem as going to the moon and you optimize hard enough for chipping flint hand axes and throwing spears and, above all, outwitting your fellow humans in tribal politics, uh, you know, the, 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 the skills you entrain that way, if they run deep enough, let you go to the moon. Even though none of your ancestors, like, tried repeatedly to fly to the moon and, like, got further each time, and the ones who got further each time had more kids. No, it's not an ancestral problem. It's just that the ancestral problems generalize far enough. So this is humanity's significantly more generally applicable intelligence. Is there a way to measure general intelligence I mean, I can ask that question a million ways, but basically, is will you know it when you see it, it being in an AGI system? <laughs> if you boil a frog gradually enough, if you zoom in far enough, it's always hard to tell around the edges. GPT-4, people are saying right now, like, this looks to us like a spark of general intelligence. It is like able to do all these things it was not explicitly optimized for. Yeah. Other people are being like, no, it's too early. It's like, like 50 years off. And, you know, if they say that, they're kind of whack, because how could they possibly know that even if it were true? Um, but, uh, but you know, not to straw man, some of people may say, like, that's not general intelligence, and not, furthermore, append, it's 50 years off. Um, or they may be like, it's only a very tiny amount. And, you know, <laughs> The thing I would worry about is that if this is how things are scaling, then it jumping out ahead and trying not to be wrong in the same way that I've been wrong before, maybe GPT-5 is more unambiguously a general intelligence. And maybe that is getting to a point where it is like even harder to turn back. Not that it would be easy to turn back now, but you know, maybe if you let it, if you like start integrating GPT-5 in the, into the economy, it is even harder to turn back past there. Isn't it possible that there's a, you know, with a frog metaphor, you can kiss the frog and it turns into a prince as you're boiling it. Could there be a phase shift in the frog where unambiguously, as you're saying? I was expecting more of that. I, I was, I, I am like, the, the fact that GPT-4 is like kind of on the threshold and neither here nor there, like that itself is like not the sort of thing that, not quite how I expected it to play out. I was expecting there to be more of an issue, uh, more of a sense of like, like different discoveries like the discovery of transformers, where you would stack them up and there would be like a final discovery, and then you would like get something that was like more clearly general intelligence. So the the way that you are like taking what is probably basically the same architecture as in GPT-3 and throwing 20 times as much compute at it, probably and getting out GBT4, and then it's like, maybe just barely a general intelligence, Mm -hmm. or like a narrow general intelligence, or, you know, something we don't really have the words for. Um, Yeah, that is, uh, that's not quite how I expected it to play out. But this middle, what appears to be this middle ground, could nevertheless be actually a big leap from GPT-3. It's definitely a big leap from GPT-3. And then maybe we're another one big leap away from something that's that's a phase shift. I mean, and also something that uh, Sam Altman said, uh, and you've written about this, this is fascinating, which is 
the thing that happened with GPT-4 that I guess they don't describe in papers is that they have like hundreds, if not thousands of little hacks that improve the system. You've written about Railu versus Sigmoid, for example, a function inside neural networks. It's like this silly little function difference that makes a big difference. I mean, we do actually understand why the ReLUs make a big difference compared to sigmoids. But yes, they're probably using like G4789 ReLU, ELUs or you know whatever the acronyms are up to now rather than ReLUs. Um, yeah, that's that's just part. Yeah, that's part of the modern paradigm of alchemy. You take your giant heap of linear algebra and you stir it, and it works a little bit better. And you stir it this way, and it works a little bit worse. And you like throw out that change and. Da -da 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 -da. But there's some simple breakthroughs that are definitive jumps in performance, like Rayleigh's over Sigmoids. And uh, in terms of robustness, in terms of you know, you know in all kinds of measures, and like those stack up. And they can, it's possible that some of them could be a non-linear jump in performance, right? Transformers are the main thing like that. And various people are now saying like, well, if you throw enough compute, RNNs can do it. If you throw enough compute, dense networks can do it. And not quite at GPT-4 scale. Um, it is possible that like all these little tweaks are things that like save them a factor of three total on computing power, and you could get the same performance by throwing three times as much compute without all the little tweaks. But the part where it's like running on, so, so there's a question of like, is there anything in GPT-4 that is like the kind of qualitative shift that transformers were yeah. over um, RNNs? And if they have anything like that, they should not say it. If Sam Altman was, was dropping hints about that, he shouldn't have dropped hints. Uh, so you you have a, that's an interesting question. So with a bit of lesson by Rich Sutton, maybe a lot of it is just, a lot of the hacks are just temporary jumps in performance that would be achieved anyway with the nearly exponential growth of compute, or performance of compute, compute being broadly defined do you still think that Moore's law continues? Moore's law broadly defined the performance. I'm not of a specialist in the circuitry. I certainly like pray that Moore's law runs as slowly as possible. And if it broke down completely tomorrow, I would dance through the through the streets singing hallelujah as soon as the news were announced. Only not literally, because you know you're singing voice. Not religious, but oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you meant you don't have an angelic voice singing voice.